SpaceX's launch facility at Boca Chica is buzzing with excitement again as SpaceX prepares to finally test its new Super Heavy booster. The engineers and crew at Tesla's rocket facility, or as Elon likes to call it, Starbase Texas, began working on the prototype of the Super Heavy booster almost two months ago. After about six weeks of assembly, SpaceX rolled out the first Super Heavy booster from the high bay, where it was being assembled to the launch pad on July 1st. But before we dive into the details of the upcoming test launch of the Super Heavy booster, let us first briefly explain SpaceX's crown jewel, the Starship System. Super Heavy is the booster stage of the Starship system that will one day take humans to Mars. The second stage of the system, the one with the crew and cargo, is called Starship. We know the naming convention is a little confusing. The Starship project was originally developed to create a cheap and reliable spacecraft to facilitate transit between Earth and Mars. Since then, SpaceX has realized multiple other use cases for the Starship system, like Earth-to-Earth -Earth travel, deploying satellites in orbit, and traveling to the Moon. The main objective of the Super Heavy is to be used as a booster rocket for the Starship system. The Super Heavy will boost the Starship through Earth's atmosphere during the initial leg of the Starship's journey. The idea is to augment the thrust capabilities of the launch vehicle. Booster stage rockets are designed to provide a substantial amount of thrust to the launch vehicle. Once Super Heavy runs out of fuel, it is dropped to fall back to Earth. The Super Heavy will then perform a controlled landing and be prepared for the next flight. This is the concept idea behind the Super Heavy and its role in the Starship system. Initially, the Raptor engines that will power both the Super Heavy and the second stage Starship were tested on Star Hopper test vehicles. The first hop test of the Raptor engine was on July 25, 2019. It was the first untethered flight test of a single Raptor engine inside the SN6 Star Hopper. After that, a few more hop tests were performed, each last for just about 45 seconds. The last hop test was on September 3, 2020. After that, SpaceX was confident enough to proceed with a high-altitude test. The first one took place on December 9, 2020. The Starship SN8 successfully launched and descended to an altitude of 12.5 kilometers. After that, it successfully performed the flip maneuver from horizontal descent to vertical, but unfortunately low pressure in the fuel header methane tank as a result of the flip maneuver caused restricted fuel supply. This caused insufficient retropropulsive thrust to be produced to deaccelerate the rocket as it comes towards the landing site. This resulted in a crash landing and total destruction of the Starship SN8. SpaceX would later perform tests in February and March, which also resulted in failure. It was not until May when the Starship SN15 successfully landed after reaching an altitude of 10 kilometers at suborbital Pad A in Boca Chica, Texas. The total flight time came to be about 5 minutes and 59 seconds. This was a landmark test not only for SpaceX but for the whole space enthusiast community. The SN15 is the last flight test SpaceX has performed until now, but enthusiasm around SpaceX is growing again as they plan to test the Starship SN20 this month. The exciting thing about this flight test is that this will be the first time we will see the Super Heavy the first stage of the Starship system in action. According to the flight plan that SpaceX has submitted to the Federal Aviation Administration, the Starship SN20 will launch from the orbital launch pad at Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. About three minutes into the flight, Super Heavy will separate and descend into the Gulf of Mexico off the coast from Boca Chica. Meanwhile, the upper stage Starship will continue the ascent to about 328,000 feet before landing 100 kilometers northwest of the island of Kauai in Hawaii. SpaceX has not released any more details on the flight plan until now, but according to Elon Musk, Super Heavy Booster 4 will perform the flight test. The now ready Super Heavy Booster 3 will only be used for ground tests. The Super Heavy Booster 3 stands tall as 65 meters and is equipped with 32 Raptor engines. These Goliaths will produce 72 mega newtons of thrust. This is more than twice the thrust generated by the first stage of the Saturn V booster, which NASA used to send Apollo astronauts to the moon, which was about 35.1 mega newtons. The second stage Starship itself is equipped with six Raptor engines. The Starship system is capable of sending 100 metric tons of cargo into low Earth orbit, or LEO. The assembly process for the Super Heavy began on May 15, assisted by the new bridge crane at the Boca Chica facility. The process wrapped up on July 1st. 
After assembly, the Super Heavy Booster 3 was moved from the high bay and loaded on board SpaceX's self-propelled modular transport system. The Super Heavy Booster 3 was then transported down Highway 4 to the launch facility and put on the test pad A. The Super Heavy Booster 3 will be just performing ground tests, according to Elon Musk. The first Super Heavy prototype to be manufactured was Super Heavy Booster 1, or BN1. Elon Musk explained that BN1 served as a manufacturing pathfinder for them, as they used it as an opportunity to validate their design and manufacturing process. It was later dismantled. According to Elon Musk, the assembly of the Super Heavy Booster 3 was a very hard and tedious process. The assembly process consisted of stacking and welding 36 steel rings with three tank domes and dozens of other major components. But the ground crew working has developed experience after assembling Starship as the process is very similar and is dependent on the same production apparatus. The monsters powering the Super Heavy also reached Boca Chica on July 10th. Elon first tweeted about them with the caption, Fellowship of the Raptors, a nerdy reference to the Lord of the Rings. We can see in the picture that it has one Raptor vacuum engine surrounded by eight sea-level Raptor engines. According to a later tweet, Elon confirmed that the final decision had been made for the number of Raptor engines to be included on the operational Super Heavy booster. SpaceX plans to mount 33 Raptor engines to the Super Heavy booster. Elon further elaborated in a tweet, all engines on booster are the same, apart from deleting gimbal and thrust vector actuators for the outer 20. The Super Heavy 3 underwent the first cryogenic proof test successfully on July 13th. The test seemed to be a success. Booster 3 was filled with a few hundred tons of liquid nitrogen, a fraction of its total capacity. It looked like only a small amount of frost formed on the outside of Super Heavy's propellant tanks in two hours of activity. This is a sign of being cryoproof. It looks like SpaceX is choosing to be a little careful with the first cryo test. SpaceX does have a small problem, though. It doesn't have enough storage capacity to completely fill Super Heavy 3's total usable volume. Currently, they only have the capacity to fill the BN3 somewhere between 30 to 40 percent of the total usable volume of the Super Heavy Booster 3. From the looks of it, SpaceX likely filled Booster 3's tanks just to 5 to 10 percent of the way during the rocket's first cryoproof. Based on loud, visible venting that occurred throughout the process, looks like SpaceX was focused on pressure testing. With this test, SpaceX wanted to simulate a small test of the thermal shock and mechanical stresses the frame would go through in an actual launch. The Super Heavy boosters during actual launch will have to endure these types of stresses and loads when loaded with thousands of tons of propellant and generating thousands of tons of thrust with dozens of Raptor engines. Additional cryoproof testing and static firing of the Raptor engines are planned in the weeks ahead. The next few weeks will be exciting for space industry and SpaceX fans all over the world as they hold on to their seats for the upcoming flight test of the Super Heavy Booster 4 as part of the Starship SN20 system.